What's up, guys? These are the nightmare matchups of all the UFC champions. And what I mean by nightmare matchups are the most dangerous opponent to the reign of the champion or the toughest opponent for each UFC champion. These type of fights, the nightmare matchups for the champions, usually determine where they go with their championship reign. Will they be a dominant champion, such as George St. Pierre, John Jones, Anderson Silva, when they had their nightmare matchups, they were able to overcome them. Now, will the current UFC champions be able to follow in the footsteps and these types of fights determine their dominance? Are they just another champion in the history books of the UFC or will they overcome the greatest challenge in the division and rise above to an all-time great? So, Joanna Yamjaychuk, pretty sure that's how you pronounce her name, but Joanna's nightmare matchup is Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade is very explosive, very powerful, shocking cardio, very underrated ground game. Style-wise, a very tough matchup for Joanna. She is relentless. She pressures throughout the whole fight, does not get tired. Very hard for Ioana's style. Ioana likes to keep the opponents away, throw shots from the outside, use her speed, use her footwork, make it a technical fight. But Andrade likes the brawl, the inside fighting. She likes a dirty fight. And it's very hard to keep Andrade off you. So Andrade is the nightmare matchup for Ioana. And the level of danger that Andrade poses for Ioana is an 8 out of 10. And then we go to the women's bantamweight champion, Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes's nightmare matchup is Valentina Shevchenko. Of course, for obvious reasons. If you look at the first fight, you look at Nunes start to gas out and Valentina starting to gain more momentum in the fight. And that was a three-round fight. Imagine a five-round fight. Shevchenko is one of the most well-rounded female fighters of all time. An expert striker. Very technical on her feet. Probably the fastest fighter in the bantamweight division. Very, very well-rounded. Developing her ground game at rapid speed. Good in the clinch. And she matches up the best with Amanda Nunez. Nunez and Shevchenko are the most well-rounded fighters in the whole division's history. So it's a very tough fight for Nunez, the toughest in her division. And the level of danger from Shevchenko is a 7 out of 10. And then we go to the women's featherweight division. The champion, Jermaine Durandam. Even with the short list of opponents for her, she probably has the single most dangerous opponent to a champion in the UFC, and that is Chris Cyborg. Chris Cyborg, very explosive, powerful striker, well-rounded fighter, very strong, very big, relentless pressure. Good ground game, which be the key factor for Chris Cyborg in the fight. Just dangerous in all aspects of the game. Very dominant, very experienced. The level of danger from Chris Cyborg will be a 9 out of 10. And then we go to the flyweight division. The champion, Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson is the only champion that has defeated almost all opponents. He is the only champion that might not have a true nightmare matchup. But if I have to choose an opponent who is the most dangerous to him, it's of course going to be Tim Elliott. Tim Elliott is the only opponent in recent fights that has given Demetrius Johnson a lot of trouble. Especially in the first round, his grappling, his uh, submission ability, his danger off his back, his scrambling abilities, his size, his length, his toughness. All of these things give Demetrius Johnson a lot of problems, especially early in the fight. Tim Elliott is very tough and his stand-up is unusual, very unpredictable as well. It could throw traditional and conventional fighters who play by the book completely off. And the level of danger that Tim Elliott gives Demetrius Johnson is a 3 out of 10. And then we go to the bantamweight division, the champion Cody Garbrandt. The nightmare matchup for Cody Garbrandt is TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw matches very well against Cody Garbrandt. Stylistically, it's a close fight. TJ very well rounded. He's more dynamic than Dominic Cruz. His wrestling's more aggressive and he's very hard to take down himself. His switching stance style and his toughness and his mindset. I believe these are the aspects as to why TJ Dillashaw is the most dangerous opponent. Close with some other fighters such as maybe John Lineker and maybe John Dodson. But I believe the level of danger TJ poses is a 7 out of 10. And then we go to the featherweight division, the champion, Jose Aldo. There was two nightmare matchups in my mind for him, but I will have to go with Yair Rodriguez. I was back and forth between him and Max Holloway, but I believe the stylistic matchup with Yair poses a greater threat to Jose Aldo. I believe the switching stances, the long reach, 
very big for the division. Underrated ground game, very dangerous on his back. The unpredictability, the kicks from the outside, head kicks. We haven't seen a lot of head kicks thrown at Josie, although the way Yair will throw them. His elusive movement and his underrated cardio. He went five rounds with Caceres, action-packed fight. Very dangerous fight for Jose Aldo. Although Max Holloway is very dangerous himself. The level of danger I give Yari Rodriguez is a 5 out of 10. And then we go to the lightweight division. The champion, Conor McGregor. A lot of dangerous matchups for him. But if I would have to pick one, even though they're all close, if I would have to pick one, the nightmare matchup is Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson, very dangerous in all areas, well-rounded, probably the most well-rounded fighter in the division. Has some knockout power, very good in wrestling, unpredictable. He's a risk taker. He goes for Imanari rolls, grabs Darce chokes in the standing position, capoeira techniques. His 76 inch reach can pose a lot of problems for Conor. His jab, his straight right hand, his lead uppercut, which is one of his best striking techniques. He's a danger to Conor in every position. He can take Conor down if he wants. He can go the wrestling route. He can go striking with Conor. He's very unpredictable himself, as is Conor, which makes it very interesting. Although many people say, oh, what about Khabib or what about Nate Diaz? What about even guys like Edson Barboza? I agree. Dangerous, you may be right. They're all close, but if I would have to pick, it's Tony Ferguson, and the level of danger he poses is an 8 out of 10. And then we go to the welterweight division. Tyron Woodley. A couple dangerous matchups for Tyron Woodley. For Tyron Woodley may have been the hardest to pick, the most dangerous opponent out of every champion. But the nightmare matchup is Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal, very dangerous, well-rounded in every position. Has good wrestling defense, very good grappling defense if it's on the ground. He's good off his back. He has some knockout power, quick for the division. He has some good kicks, very unpredictable kicks. They come out of nowhere. His jab is one of his best weapons. It could be a lot of problems for a guy like Woodley, who likes to throw wide shots. He likes to throw right overhands a lot. And the thing that makes Corey Masvidal one of the most dangerous fighters in the division for Woodley is Woodley likes to go against the cage. He likes to put his back against the cage. And against a guy like Corey Masvidal, this could be dangerous. As we've seen with Jake Ellenberger, when Jake Ellenberger's back was against the cage, Jorge Masvidal was teeing off on him. And he was picking his shots, and he hurt Jake Ellenberger, who is very similar to Tyron Woodley, but not the same, but has a similar style. And the level of danger I give Jorge Masvidal is a 6.5 out of 10. And then we go to the middleweight division, the champion, Michael Bisping. The nightmare matchup for Michael Bisping is Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero, stylistically a nightmare for Michael Bisping. Has some of the best wrestling in the UFC. Knockout power in every shot he throws. He's a southpaw. Very elusive movement, very unpredictable movement. He lulls you with his footwork. Explodes out of nowhere, one of the fastest guys in the division. The only knock on him is his cardio, but he has the ability to knock out opponents even in the third round. He's done it a couple times. So, Yoel Merrill's level of danger to Michael Bispink is an 8 out of 10. And then we go to the light heavyweight division. The champion, Daniel Cormier. There's some factors for the nightmare matchup for him because it will be John Jones. What? It will be a prime John Jones. If he does show up the way he showed up against OSP, then I don't consider him the nightmare matchup. But considering a prime John Jones, John Jones is the nightmare matchup for Daniel Cormier. Very, very talented in all areas. Good grappler, striker, in the clinch, wrestler. His Muay Thai is excellent. His boxing is good. Very unpredictable kicks. Unpredictable in every area, actually. We've seen he was able to take down Daniel Cormier without much difficult in the first fight. His submissions are excellent. The most submissions in the division's history. And the level of danger from John Jones would be an 8.5 out of 10. And then we go to the heavyweight division. Stipe Miocic, the champion. The most dangerous matchup, the nightmare matchup for Stipe is... Junior Dos Santos. JDS has elite boxing, good movement, extremely fast for the division, some of the best takedown defense. He has some good takedowns himself. His in and out movement is excellent. He's so accurate with his right hand. He mixes up his striking, even his kicks are getting better, looking at the Ben Rothwell fight. And JDS may be in the prime of his career right now, looking from the Rothwell fight. So the level of danger from JDS is 8 out of 10. So these are the nightmare matchups for all of the UFC champions. Remember, this is an opinion. 
is opinion based. I'm not claiming it's factual. I'm not claiming these are facts that everyone should agree with me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. And in the comments below, share what your nightmare matchups are. The most dangerous matchups for every champion. I'm curious to see what you guys think if you guys agree or disagree. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.